Shut up and jump. Hey, we're shaking, Warfighter Nation. Ron here with Warfighter Ranch and Isaiah 68. It's hump day. You know what that means. It's time for a little SOS, a little salvation on station, because everyone needs a little close air support every now and then. The other day I was going through uh, our God file. Uh, you know, the external hard drive with all your scan documents, retirement orders, baby pictures, and the like. The God file. Right? And every time we have one, and it fills up, we get a new one because that drive is to never be deleted. None of that stuff, right? This is the precious, precious things that we we keep, things we need, and precious memories with our pictures and such. And you know, some of those pictures just took me back uh, to our early days when honestly, I never had a clue of the incredible blessings and depth and breadth of love that I could experience. My darling Helen showed me that. And this year is a culmination of over 20 years of experiencing life together. It may seem like forever ago now, but I noticed over the last couple of years or so, people have really been looking to push forward through time. Started in 2020. Wanted to blow right past that because the world seemingly could not wait for 2021 and then 2022 to get here. Many did not make it to 2022. And then there was the election and then the inauguration after that. And here we are into our third year of this insanity. My point is that no matter when we are in history, there will always be something looming on the horizon. It takes a leap of faith sometimes. But we're not the only ones who ever had to take that leap. Those early followers of Jesus, the first believers, the first Christians, had to take a leap of faith as well. They were the rebellion, the insurgency of their day, as they peacefully raged against the establishment. At the time, Israel was steeped deeply into its culture, and everyday life revolved around the temple in a land long suffering from their Roman occupiers. For them, it was a conscious decision, a choice to walk away from the social norms of the day and in a huge way. And then there was no going halfway on this either. You had to be all in because your life literally depended on it. Did every one of those early believers persecuted wind up living through their experience? Of course not. The disciples died for their faith, all but one. And he was banished to exile on a foreign island. And he still managed to write the book of Revelation. How cool is that? My man, John, if that tells me anything, it tells me that nothing is impossible with God and that no man will ever be able to close a door that the Lord has opened. The money changers and those selling sacrificial items at the temple were, in the simplest of terms, collaborators with the temple staff. They were profiteering from their religion instead of living their faith to honor God. They chose rules over relationship. Devout Jews were required to bring their sacrifices to the temple. And though many lived far away, they often purchased animals for sacrifice at the temple. Part of the sacrifice is hauling the animal yourself, putting in the work and giving your very best for God every step of the way. It's kind of like buying an Arab Spring Ramadi t-shirt at the souvenir stand, but you were at Camp Arif John for a year and never left Baskin Robbins. Yeah, Ron, but isn't this the part where Jesus got angry? That is a big Raj. Affirmative. Check. 
Pharisees, the Sadducees, and other rabbis that allowed this, overlooked it, or enabled it, were nothing short of politicians themselves, hiding behind the entity of the temple, and were clearly morally and professionally corrupt. And worse yet, because their primary focus being religion, they focused on tradition and rules instead of the proper context, reality, and benevolence to God in the relationship that he created before we were ever born. Jesus' anger was a holy and righteous anger, and therefore justified by God. Absolutely. Think about it. Somebody camped out on your grandparents' front porch and started hawking their wares. You know darn well before you could get the first sip of sweet tea in that Papa would be on that porch racking a 12 gauge in no time flat. It would be expected. So why is it any different when the ultimate authority, the son of man, Jesus does it? Try that mess with Papa and he'd slap the taste clean out of your mouth. Yet irreverence to the living God, the God of the Bible, the God of the universe, somehow seems appropriate? Don't be dumb. Come to think of it, it seems like many are doing that now. Look, I'm no doctor, but this doesn't really sound like rocket surgery to me. On a side note, I always thought that Jesus should have introduced that Jethro Gibbs back of the head slap during that incident. Seems appropriate. But I can't really cry about it because he did make a whip out of cords. And for personal and artistic reasons, I'm okay with that. People of faith people of the church. Listen to me now and hear me later. As Peter tells us, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone for a reason of the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. 1 Peter 3.15 it's the same thing when new Christians get seriously overzealous and they start beating people over the head with their Bible. Nobody ever won anybody to Christ by beating somebody over the head with their Bible. You feel me? Back to business. So by compromising or fitting in, everyone from Pharisees on down somehow agreed on one level or another to this collaborative effort, though they all knew it wasn't right by God. Read, you say? Sure, but I think there was a lot of pride there as well. After all, they had their elevated positions, reputations, and their really tall headgear to hold up. But at the end of the day, none of those things could promise or deliver eternal life. No religion, no other false god has ever conquered life and death and waits for our return. They were focused on the rules of the day rather than the relationship that could and would change everything if only we would allow it. It is first and foremost the peak embodiment of one's free will, gaining everything through complete and unconditional surrender. Think about it like this. Jesus was the living embodiment of everything Sun Tzu was trying to convey through his famous work, The Art of War. Sorry, sonny boy. After all, God said he would use the simple to confound the wise. I believe they felt like tradition was the enemy of progress, whether it was in societal norms that didn't seem to benefit anybody but the temple, per se, or the comfort zones that we all create for ourselves, including a lot of modern churches. Joseph, Jesus' earthly dad, took a chance and leaned into his faith with everything he had. He was placed in a position that he never thought he'd be in. And rather than live in the flesh of the day, so to speak, he risked everything. And in doing so, embraced the opportunity to live in obedience. And because he did, he experienced blessings that he could have never imagined. After all, he was much more than just a simple carpenter. Joseph was the man that God chose to raise his one and only son as a newborn into manhood. Nah, no pressure there. 
with great privilege comes great responsibility. Sound familiar? Not from Spider-Man, knucklehead. From the Bible. It's from Luke 12, 28. To whom much is given, much is required. I don't know if he was older or younger than me or not when it happened to me. But in our mid-40s, we had a child thrust into our lives as well. Not gonna lie. I've got three combat tours, five children, exited high-performance aircraft more times than my back would like. I joined the Army in 1990. I was 6'4", and the day I got my DD-214, I was 6'3". Just saying, I was scared. Our youngest was in high school, we were retired, and just like that, we were in diapers. Again. I said it before and I'll say it again, God loves a teachable moment. This old jumper took that leap. It truly was a leap of faith because I had no idea what we were getting into. But we had the faith that if God would lead us to it, then he would most certainly lead us through it. And many of you have been along for the ride with us and Little Frog ever since. Thank you so much for your support. It has really meant everything. And she has felt every bit of love that has come from you guys. I just realized the girls are behind me once more. Where's my wall? And he has. And even though... I swore to myself I would not allow myself to fully commit to becoming a foster parent. Well, God had other plans, and so did she. Most of you know, and some of you may have guessed, I fell, I fell hard, without a chute, plunging in like a lawn dart at blistering speed. I loved her as my own, and she accepted us wholeheartedly. She taught me that loving a child is loving a child, regardless of where they come from, who their parents are, or what the color of their skin is. You know, I can't even imagine the depth and breadth of love that I would have missed out on had I not taken that leap. What blessings could possibly come your way with just a little leap of faith? If you're blessed enough to have a child placed in your care, regardless of how they come to you, know that yours is nothing short of a mission from God. With all the children living in foster care and all the beautiful parents that I know that cannot bear children, there is a solution here. We're the solution. America doesn't have a skin problem. America has a sin problem. But if you're going to do it, do it right. Pastor John MacArthur once wrote, Fail to teach your child to fear God, and the devil will teach them to hate God. Fail to teach your children to guard their mind, and the devil will teach them to have an open mind. Fail to teach your child to obey their parents, and the devil will teach them to rebel and break his parents' heart. Fail to teach your child to select his companions, and the devil will choose them for him. Fail to teach your children to control their body and the devil will gladly teach them to give it over completely to lust. Fail to teach your children to watch their words and the devil will fill their mouths. Fail to teach your children to manage their money and the devil will teach them to waste it. Fail to teach your children to love their neighbor and the devil will gladly teach them to love only themselves. So let your next leap of faith start a new season for you. You've got your spiritual chow. Pass it on to the next troop. Next mission, time now. We're cleared hot at this time. Smoke vent six, this is smoke jumper seven. Roger that, next mission, time now.